Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to our online Wednesday night Bible devotional. I'm always delighted that we can connect together for these few minutes each and every Wednesday night. I want to share with you a couple of announcements just before we begin our devotional. One of them is I'm so excited about our Good News Clubs, the uh, club at Beachy Elementary School and the club at Sharp Elementary School. We're really excited about it, and we want to just make a, a plea. We want to make a request of you. If you're not involved in the Good News Club after-school program, we would ask if you would just pray. Pray for the boys and girls. Uh, pray for the schools, their administration, for the teachers, and then also pray for the Good News Club teams that will be going into Beachy Elementary School as well as Sharp. That will be taking place on the last Tuesday at Beachy Elementary School, the last Tuesday of the month, and Sharp Elementary School will be meeting on Thursdays, and that will begin as well on the last Thursday of this month, next week, and so it's already here, so, and then that will uh, continue on through Christmas, and so again, we, we, we covet your prayers. Thank you in advance for praying for God's help as we invest in the boys and girls at these schools. Also want to let you know that next Saturday we have uh, coming up is our Women's Ministries Brunch. It's going to take place from 10 to 12 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. It will be taking place in the Life Center. And again, uh, that's this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it's going to be a great time. They have a panel of several ladies made up of several ladies who have, who have walked with the Lord. They've been followers of Jesus for decades. And they will be sharing some of the great experiences that they've had in life where God took them through some of the lows of life, the in-betweens of life, and how he as well was with them during some of the up times in life. But nonetheless, they were faithful. God is faithful to them. And they'll be sharing some of those things on that Saturday, this Saturday. So you don't want to miss it. Uh, make sure that you have a ticket for that there. The tickets are $10 each. If you can't afford that, please let uh, Terry know or one of the ladies, uh, uh, Terry Montano, and they'll make sure that you get a ticket. We don't want um, money to be prohibitive, a prohibitive factor for anybody uh, at any of our events. So let them know. Well, this evening I want to just share on um, what does it mean to be saved? What does it mean to be saved? Um, there's a passage of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. It says, anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. Isn't that great? Uh, the past is forgotten. Everything is new. God has done it all. He sent Christ to make peace between himself and the Lord and God. And it says, uh, again, he says, he has sent speaking about God, has sent Christ to make peace between himself and us and has given us the work, the work of making peace between himself and others. What a great thing. And so I want to just look at that for a few moments this evening. What does it mean to be, what does it mean to be saved? Because of God's great mercy, the Bible says, because of God's great mercy, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. We find that in Luke chapter 19, verse number 10. And it, uh, it is a great passage of scripture. And he shows us that, uh, that that's how much he loves us. That you matter to him. That he believes in you. And he, and he revealed that by sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your, for your sins, for my sins, for our sins. And that's the kind of love that God has for us. Now, you may have heard people say, well, I'm saved. You may have found yourself saying that, speaking of your relationship as a follower of Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm saved. But what does it mean to be saved? What happens when you accept the gift, the free gift of salvation from God? What happens during that time? Well, number one, salvation does this here. It rescues you from yourself. Many people, many people don't think they need to be saved. You know, I was at a a gun store not too long ago and I was buying some uh, some ammo to go to the shooting range and 
I got into conversation with the gentleman that was there. And uh, he asked me what I did, and I told him I was a pastor, and uh, we got into further conversation. Uh, and then I asked him, I said, can I ask you a personal question? He said, yeah, sure. I said, have you ever come to faith in Christ? Have you ever asked him to forgive you of your sins and put your faith in what he's done on the cross for you, for the forgiveness of your sin? He goes, oh, he goes, I don't, uh, I don't need that. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And I, he, uh, he said that, and I said, well, um, I said, so you have no pain in your life. You have no resentment, no pressures, no guilt, no anxieties. Um, and, uh, you know, he just uh, looked at me and, and kind of ended the conversation. But listen, everybody has problems that they just can't solve on their own. Everybody does, no matter who it is. It might be that young man. He's got them. He may not admit, admit it, but he's got problems. Everyone needs to be rescued. Everybody, everybody has need of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, call on me in the time of trouble, and I will answer you. Isn't that, listen, call on me in the time of trouble, I will rescue you, and you will honor me. And that's found in Psalm 50, verse number 15. Um, so why am I saved? The first thing that we look at is, um, what, what, you know, what, what comes with that in that package? Well, the first thing is uh, salvation rescues us from ourselves. But there's another thing. Salvation recovers what you've lost. Uh, what would you like to get back um, that you may have lost? Maybe you've lost confidence. Maybe you've lost peace. Maybe you've lost your joy. Uh, maybe you've lost a dream. Um, Jesus has come to help you to recover what you've lost. If you're familiar with farming or you've read anything about farming or you maybe even watched a movie that, uh, that revealed you know, what has happened to, uh, a, to, a, to a farmer's crop, a corn crop. Uh, I've seen movies before where there will there'll be a swarm of locusts that come through and in a matter of hours they've out, they absolutely destroy um, a, a crop. And so, you know, I ask you the question um, this evening, what has been eaten away maybe at, perhaps at your life? What has destroyed uh, your plans, your relationships? Listen, only God can restore, but that he can do. The Bible says in Joel chapter 2, verse number 25, it says this here, God speaking, he says, I'll give you back what you lost in the years when the swarms of the locust ate your crops. And then there's a third thing that we, that we have because we are saved, because we've come to faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation reconnects us to God. When you surrender your life to God, Jesus makes peace between you and him. He tears down all the barriers that once separated you from, from your creator, from my creator, from God. And there's a word for that, and it's called reconciliation. We do that with our checkbook. We reconcile it. We make it right at the end of each and every month. And the Bible says anyone who belongs to Christ is a new, is a new person. The past is forgotten, and everything becomes new. God has done it all. He sent Christ to make peace between himself and us. And he has given us the work of making peace between himself and and other people. And that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Being reconciled to God, it also means being with Him forever. What a thought. You will have a home in heaven for all of eternity. And that's really what it means to be saved. Listen, you receive forgiveness for your past. He gives you purpose to live for today. And then He gives to you imparts to you and I the free gift of eternal life, hope for the future. And really that's what it means to be saved. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're shaking your head right now saying, yep, that's exactly what, it, what, what he has done for me. He's forgiven me of my sins. He's given me purpose for today and peace and joy and the free gift of eternal life for the future. And that's what it means really to be saved. And we can take great comfort in that. 
and embracing that truth. And that alone will bring such peace and comfort to our hearts. Lord, we thank you this evening for your presence. We thank you for the wonderful gift of eternal life. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and raising from the dead on the third day. And Lord, you've offered to each and every person, every person, any person who would come to you, you offer to them forgiveness for their sins. And you promise to fill their souls with your peace, with joy, with comfort. And so we thank you for that, Lord. If there are any of our friends that are not in relationship with you, Lord, I pray that they would make that commitment tonight to know you as their Savior. And for those who are followers already of you, may they come to a fresh, a fresh realization of everything that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you bless each of our friends with a good night's rest and a great day tomorrow. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen.